The political will to keep Canada as a country from coast to coast will be tested sometime in the next four years by a referendum in Quebec. There's been a good deal of complacency about it because the polls show that something less than 20% of Quebecers are determined separatists. Well, take no comfort. There's a special chemistry to referendums. Previous ones have shown wild swings in public opinion, as well as considerable success in breaking up countries. In 1905, Norway split from Sweden after a referendum. In 1971, Singapore left Malaysia the same way. The most recent referendum in Canada brought a new province into the country, but the point to be made from the Newfoundland vote in 1948 is that it was against bigger odds than Quebec Premier René Levesque faces now. Twenty-nine years ago, a politically unknown pig farmer named Joe Smallwood led Newfoundland into confederation. A new hope has arisen in the hearts of our people. They see in confederation a new hope for the common man. He did it by referendum. He did it through speeches and propaganda which set the horizon on fire. Smallwood was nowhere at the beginning, nowhere at least, compared to René Levesque's position now. In Quebec, a dramatic chapter in Canadian history has begun. This is the cabinet determined to take Quebec out of confederation. These party Quebecois ministers are preparing the apparatus for a referendum on secession. To win it, they know they must first win a propaganda war. The strategy is to convince Quebecers, especially French-speaking ones, that theirs is a nation that can make it alone, make it alone emotionally, alone economically. The party now has the powerful advantages of government. It will draft the legislation for the referendum, set the limits on spending, and perhaps most important, frame the question. The party is counting heavily on the incandescence of René Levesque, in a television age, Levesque's appearances are already dramatically orchestrated. Next week, the party unveils a campaign to replenish its election war chest. It's confident of raising $1.2 million to be spent on the referendum campaign. The professionals say the timing of a referendum is crucial. Levesque has the advantage, and he's not about to give it away. We'll wait just as long as is required to have basic regulations set up for an honest referendum with equitable uh, sharing of position in the decisive campaign for the pros and the cons. And in the meantime, there are some things we have to do first. So we're going to do first thing, to keep on doing first things th first, and set up the rules of a honest referendum, and then, which could be two years, two and a half years, three years, certainly, certainly not four years, Toronto lawyer Jerry Grafstein is a liberal image maker. For him, selling the country is the ultimate political challenge, and he and the federal liberals are determined to do it better than in 1972 when they tried to win re-election with The Land is Strong. Grafstein is already plotting strategy to defeat Levesque on television. Rennie Levesque, people don't recognize or uh, recall this, but Rennie Levesque was probably one of the best electronic journalists this country has ever seen. He was certainly one of the most well-traveled. I mean, he, in the Second World War, he, was, uh, he, he served with the American forces as a correspondent. He was uh, with, I think, uh, Radio Free Europe for a while. I mean, the guy has really seen the world, and he was a very articulate uh, journalist. And so he, knew, he really has mastered uh, the medium. I mean, he's a, he's a professional in a, in a true sense. So in that sense, I have a, a great deal of regard for his professional expertise. But uh, Pierre Ella Trudeau is no slouch as, as well. I think he's a very capable and, uh, and competent uh, uh, person when it comes to the use of the media as well. One should not take separation to be inevitable. On the contrary, one should take the future of Canada as one country to be the future as we want it and as we will build it. I remember in the 1974 campaign, one of my jobs was to uh, help edit some of the TV commercials. So I spent uh, dozens of hours in a, uh, a studio uh, watching uh, his face and, and, uh, and really sort of editing uh, a lot of footage into 30 and 60 second uh, commercials. And I became fascinated with the fact that his face was always changing. I mean, he really has a very interesting and a complex set of features. And I think that that type of complexity and vitality really is magnified on the screen. If it's going to be won or lost on television, what kind of a show is it going to be? Is it, is it sort of political, uh, political star, uh, Starsky and Hutch? It really isn't. Is it an Oddfellows? It's really not. 
but it has the characteristics of a television show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the reason why it does is because I think it's unreal to a lot of people in Quebec, as, as well as being unreal to a lot of people out in the rest of Canada. It's almost like you're, you're not watching a real thing. You're sort of watching uh, an event that you can't quite grasp. Secession referendums, at least at the municipal level, are old hat in California. Recently, 80% of the residents of a rich suburb wanted to split from the city. But in the end, a high-powered campaign firm came in and beat the separatists two to one. Here in California, referendums have become a way of government. The campaigns are waged by professional firms who specialize in only that. This is the headquarters of one of the ones that handles the big ones and usually wins. The name, Winner and Wagner. Well, in most campaigns today, television is a major a form of media that, that has the greatest impact. Paul Mandeback, part of a team managing referendum campaigns. His firm's commercials are carefully aimed, the exact opposite of this one done by their opponents. Hi, folks. I'm John Denver. You know, this is a very interesting time in the history of life on the planet Earth. In this case, singer John Denver campaigned in a referendum to curb nuclear power. What's interesting is the tactic and how it might be used in Quebec. Most Quebec entertainers are on the independence bandwagon. In a referendum campaign, the PQ will probably use these stars as minstrels for a yes vote. Thank you. Paid for by the Yes on 15 committee. Entertainers speaking on entertainment will have some credibility but not on nuclear energy, uh, not on secession, uh, not on... Referendum nuclear, manager Charles Winner. A uh, technical kind of a ballot measure. So we do not use entertainers. I'm Bob Moretti. Just when Instead of entertainers, Winner used authoritative voices like this California Energy Commissioner. After careful research, he found that the public tends to believe a Nobel laureate more than even a president or prime minister. He says the PQ needs to use businessmen and economists to make independence credible. Although polls showed the referendum manager slightly behind when this campaign on the nuclear ban started, they carried their no side two to one. People who want to be educated want to be educated by people who they think know more about it than they do. So that uh, in any campaign that we're involved in, we try to use credible, factual messages delivered or communicated by credible spokespersons in those fields. How important is it to be in control of the referendum mechanics? How big an advantage? It's a very, very big advantage. How the would advantage you use of it? timing uh, allows them to, uh, uh, to set the stage, uh, 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 to set the objectives and goals and plan a strategy and implement the strategy uh, to their best advantage. The importance of controlling the mechanics was illustrated in a Quebec survey released on the weekend by the CBC radio show Sunday Morning. There were two questions. The first one was simply independence, yes or no. Only 16% said yes to that. But when the question was put, are you in favor of an independent Quebec in an economic common market with the rest of Canada, the yes vote precisely doubled. You've done a number of county secession referendums. What sleeper issues do you look for in those? What do you find? Well, we found that uh, in, uh, in the most recent uh, county secession uh, campaign that we did, that the public was very concerned about uh, fire risk, fire damage, fire protection. Firefighting, I suppose that might be analogous to, say, armed forces That's in exactly Canada, that. which That's nobody exactly. really pays much attention to in our uh, in Quebec situation. Individual reporters in Quebec are frequently accused of separatist bias. If it is a media war, could a sympathetic press cinch the referendum for Levesque, or would reporters who are made to look biased lose their credibility? I'd rather have, have a journalist who is a, 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 an honest uh, a reporter and a good reporter than I would one who happens to support that particular position. I think our credibility with them is important, and their credibility is important to us too. The fact is, we can't communicate unless we can communicate through the media. There's no other way we can communicate. Yes, we can do some mail. Yes, we can buy advertising. But a good deal of the campaign is done through the free media. How important is money? Can you, can you buy one of these referendums? We did research. We commissioned an outside firm to research and find what, what effect money did have in campaigns. And we found that, in fact, the campaigns that spent the most money most of the time lost, so that 
You can't buy elections. It's the quality of the message, the quality of the campaign. You know something of the situation in Canada. Which side, as a professional, would you prefer to be on in that referendum? I think I'd rather be on the federal side. Why? You start off with a status quo. The people are generally not inclined to dramatic change. And if you can convince people that the status quo isn't so bad, uh, you have a more deliverable message, in my opinion. Consider what happened here in Newfoundland. March 1st, 1946, Joe Smallwood wrote a series of letters to the editor of the St. John's Daily News. It was the start of his crusade to get Newfoundland into Canada. He certainly had no more than 10% of the population with him at that time. He held no elected office. In fact, most of the elected politicians were against him, as were the leading businessmen and most of the church leaders. The people had hardly thought of Canada. In fact, their ties were more to Britain or the U.S. But despite all that, two years later, in a referendum, they voted to join Canada. It took two referendums, but Joe Smallwood instinctively understood the techniques which have been turned into a science in California. Despite fear of change, he went from 10% support to 52% in two years, enough to beat the responsible government faction which wanted to make Newfoundland independent. One man in the right with God is a majority, Lincoln said. And uh, somebody else said the best way to win a case is to be right. We were right. We believed that it would be good for Newfoundland, not only good, but best. The sentiment was the other way. You know, don't sell your country. Don't sell your country up the St. Lawrence. This fellow Smallwood is a traitor. He's a Judas Iscariot. He's betraying his country. He is a quizzling. Uh, don't listen to him. Don't sell your country. Don't sell your country. <laughs> The anti-Confederation song, a warning against the Canadian wolf. Her face turns to Britain, her back to the Gulf. Come near at your peril, Canadian wolf. Would you batter our birthright, your fathers have won. Your freedom transmitted... Like Levesque, the independent side in Newfoundland had not only the political power, but the heartstrings of many of the people. Don't let it be said that your birthright was sold. Uh, that had a tug to it, a big tug. But on the other hand, uh, the cost of living was what it was. Uh, and then they'd look at these things that I was telling them about. Is it true that every family in Canada, and it would be like that in Newfoundland, every family, rich and poor, high and low, every month, 12 times every year, in every nook and cranny of Newfoundland would receive a check, so much for every individual child, $5 every month, at $60 a year, for every child up to six years of age or whatever it was, and then six dollars a month for every child, and seven dollars a month. Well, that happens, a fortune. As in California, and probably in Quebec, the winning side won through the media. Smallwood became a force through radio broadcasts of a convention set up here to decide Newfoundland's future. And they'd crowd into each other's kitchens, 18, 20, 25 people, sitting on the floor and listening intently, and if anyone even coughed, they'd turn on like dogs, you know, they didn't want to miss a word of the debates in the convention. Our people are on the march, in their tens of thousands. A great democratic, popular people's crusade to bring the truth before the people. They'll have to be blind, deaf, and dumb, all three, not to understand before this referendum is held. I'll guarantee that right now. All, all three together, blind, deaf, and dumb, not to understand what confederation means between now and the referendum. The people, Lord, the people, not thrones and crowns and merchants, but men. God save the people, save them from bondage and despair.
God save the people. He began to sound like a young messiah come out of the desert, you know, to lead the flock somewhere or they're not so sure where. But he was the Wick young messiah. Collins, now an editorial writer, was a leader in the fight against Confederation. He had been a radio broadcaster. There was a certain appeal in his, his approach. So it was centered around his personality. Everything they did in publicity-wise was a lot smarter, a lot slicker, a lot shrewder than the, that put out by the Responsible Government League. Ours in, was inclined to be sort of rather like heavy st statements of, or pronouncements from the establishment. Uh, it was almost like the voice of God ringing down in some ways, you know. Brave Newfoundlanders who blow the small sea With hearts like the eagles so bold and so free the time is at hand when you'll all have to say if confederation will carry the day. Small was newspaper, for instance. They would publish a cartoon about responsible government, showing responsible government as the source of all want and misery and corruption and graft and undernourishment and impoverished children in the background and God knows what. I didn't have the advantage of television. I had only radio, but at that time no one had television, and the entire population of Newfoundland listened to me, and I was well known. My voice was well known. My name was. How important is that? Rene Levesque, as well as being the premier, built his reputation as a broadcaster, as a communicator. Well, I think that, uh, that in politics of any kind, uh, radio and television, especially television, is a sheer miracle. It's an absolute miracle. But uh, Rainey is not the only one who can go on TV. Uh, there are others who can do that. Well, I think, I, I don't know, I have an, I, I, I say that Levesque could win, but his chances are slim, very, very slim. But with the right campaign and the wrong reactions from English Canada, he could win. He's going to be largely dependent on the reactions in English Canada. So they have the people of Canada who are in Quebec and in all the other nine provinces have a great part to play, and the part they have to play is to show that they regard the Canadians in Quebec who are of French descent and language and race and culture as their brothers, brother Canadians. Uh, that's not too heavy a price for us non-French uh, Canadians to pay for the preservation of a great and beautiful land, is it? But I don't think you're ever going to sell Quebec to English Canada, my feeling. You might sell it in the, the odd patch of it here and there, but the general feeling I have is that I think it's gone now beyond the stage where you can sell Quebec to English Canada. So how can you sell English Canada to Quebec? Uh, well, this is, this is going to be part of the thing. This is what makes it good for René Lévesque, doesn't it? It makes it easier for René Lévesque. They won't be divided. The, the Federalists will not be divided. They'll be one mighty and influential and capable and clever and sincere uh, movement with just as much uh, emotion and just as much sentiment as on the other side, more in fact. Surely you can be much more emotional about an appeal and arouse emotions much more on an issue of preserving the unity of a great and lovely nation than in breaking it up. Uh, surely, surely all the logic and the sense and the practicality and the sentiment and the emotion will be in favor of keeping Canada going as a nation. But your, your opponents were able to talk about the, the importance of keep, keeping Newfoundland as a nation. All the same yes. arguments. Yes, and, 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 and they lost because they kept pointing out that keeping Newfoundland separate meant hunger, it meant starvation, it meant unemployment, it meant trying to paddle our own canoe. Uh, trying to get along by our own unaided efforts. This we had never been able to do. And in this modern world, post-war world, with the fierce competition and struggle for existence and rivalry, we'd be lost, completely lost. Whereas here was a great country, Canada, which had helped uh, to win the war, which had lent Britain thousands of millions, up in the billions of dollars, and had played a very great part in a world war, here was a great nation that would be happy to have us and Canada, proud to have us. Our home and native land, true patriot love, we 
which all our sons command. With glowing hearts we see the rise, the true north strong and free. We stand on guard, O Canada. True patriot love. Both sides in the Quebec debate claim to command it now, but from their initial strategies, they don't seem to be counting on heartstrings to win it. The PQ is now using economic arguments to sell separatism, the same kind of arguments the Federalists have always used in support of keeping the province in. But whether it's head or heart, despite the polls now, Rennie Levesque is no underdog.